Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm your host, Tom. Thanks for tuning in. Tonight, I'll be telling a mythological tale about Thoth and Ra, the ancient Egyptian gods of the moon and the sun. So, as you lay in bed, gradually easing into the rest and relaxation of night, begin to slow your breathing into a gentle pace that feels comfortable for you. Nice and consistent, breathing in and slowly back out. And if you need some extra help to calm your body and mind, then close your eyes and try to visualize yourself simply as you are right now. You're laying comfortably relaxed in bed. And here in this peaceful moment, imagine that your body is surrounded by a calm, warming glow, a peaceful energy. Take another deep breath and begin to absorb that glow within. Let it flow with the breath into your body, gradually filling every part of you from head to toe. With each deep breath, this essence of warmth and peace fills you more and more. Visualize it and feel it. It may only be subtle, but your inner glow is there, and it can nourish and recharge your body throughout the night. As you continue to relax, allow your mind to travel far back in time, to ancient Egypt thousands of years ago. Here, along the banks of the legendary Nile River, we'll learn about the myths, the gods, and the people who wove their tales. Thoth, the Egyptian god of the moon and magic, likes to write at night. His pen always moves more easily under the light of the moon and stars. Tonight, Thoth has a story to tell about the sun god Ra and the people who live in Egypt. His reed pen scratches against the sheet of papyrus as he weaves his tail. Soon the sun will rise, and Ra will spring forth from the land of the gods, leaving Thoth to travel to the underworld, where neither sun nor moon can be seen. Thoth sits in his temple in Memphis, the capital of ancient Egypt. Large, smooth bricks make up Thoth's mortal home, and colorful artwork adorns the walls. 
The moonlight glints on the tips of the pyramids outside his window. The magnificent structures tower above the sleeping city. With a human body but the head of an ibis, Thoth's long, narrow beak almost touches the parchment where his pen is moving. He is painting the letters of the ancient Egyptian alphabet. The familiar smell of the Nile River wafts into his chamber, sweetening the air. The water, so essential to life in this ancient place, flows through the city. A gentle breeze rustles the palm trees, and the stars glitter in the sky, looking down upon the great sphinxes. Soon Ra will wake and eat the moon and the stars, rising with the great sun. At night he will travel back to the underworld, keeping the forces of chaos at bay. But things were not always this way. Back in the beginning, there was only Ra, the sun, and none, the water. Ra enjoyed watching the water glittering under the sun's rays. He noticed how the glow changed at different times of the day, so he kept the name Ra for the midday sun, and called himself Kepri at dawn and Atum at dusk, when the sun turned multicolored. But Ra got lonely with no other deities to talk to. so. He brought forth the wind, rattling through the palm trees and brushing their flat leaves. Then he brought the rain, relieving the dry desert air with wonderful drops of water. From his tongue came Thoth, god of the moon, stars, magic, writing, and the calendar. With the earth and the rain and the wind, it was only a matter of time until other life forms began to grow. Beautiful plants and flowers blossomed from the earth. Insects and animals flocked to the land of Egypt. Great philosophers, artists, storytellers, and architects made this place their home. Ra was no longer lonely. He walked among the people, plants, and animals, his falcon head hovering above the mortals who revered and respected him. For Ra helped the crops grow and gave the artists and scribes light to make great works. Ra ruled above the earth, while his brother and fellow god, Osiris, ruled everything below. The underworld, where gods and heroes lived, was a place of beauty and chaos. The mortal world, where the sun shone, was a place of order. Many years passed this way. Ra appointed a pharaoh to uphold law and order for the Egyptians, and Osiris kept to his realm below in the underworld. But eventually, Osiris grew restless and wanted to visit the world of mortals. 
as the days went by, the chaos of the underworld slowly began to seep into the earth above. Because of this, the men and women of Egypt no longer respected Ra or visited his temple. But Ra was not deterred. He knew there was a way to restore order to the world. Ra called Thoth to him and said, You have always assisted me in maintaining order. You have created the calendar and managed the seasons. Now I have a new job for you. You must keep watch on earth in the night. Ra explained that he would visit the underworld at night, making sure Osiris stayed there. But in the day, Ra has work to do on earth. Every morning at dawn, he begins his daily journey, moving through the sky. His pink, rosy fingers reach up from the east, bringing the light of day. In his great mouth, he swallows the moon. And with his rays, the cities of Egypt come to life. Merchants hawk their wares in markets. Women haggle for milk, eggs, and cotton cloth. Magicians perform feats of wonder in front of captivated audiences, and artists paint pictures onto stones. In the fields, farmers sow their crops, wheat, barley, flax, and vines. And in the towns, children visit tutors who teach them to read and write. As midday approaches, Ra sits high in the sky. The blazing heat pushes the farmers and merchants indoors to rest. Fresh fruit grown in the fertile ground near the Nile helps keep the people cool and refreshed. Even Ra snacks on succulent figs and sweet grapes as he enjoys the glow of the afternoon sunlight. Meanwhile, under the sun's heat, pharaohs wander through grand palaces, ordering the construction of temples, pyramids, and tombs. The architects of ancient Egypt are skilled craftsmen, utilizing a large workforce and expensive resources to build outstanding cities. And the Egyptians are also one of the earliest civilizations to adopt a writing system. During the long, hot afternoons, scribes chisel hieroglyphs into stone tablets and brush soft letters onto papyrus scrolls. Hieroglyphs are words in picture form, beautiful phonetic shapes. They're carved into tablets and painted on walls. Difficult to create, hieroglyphic writing is reserved for priests and politicians. Rather than reading from right to left or left to right, hieroglyphs are always read in the direction that the figure is facing. The figure is often a bird, so this is a fact that Thoth, with his bird's head, particularly enjoys. As the scribes work on their hieroglyphs, 
the sun god Ra continues his journey across the sky, moving west of the Nile River. Longboats sail in and out of the northern Mediterranean shore of the country, bringing and sending goods to and from the rest of the Near East. Beyond the Nile, Ra looks down at the sand dunes below, where golden dust rides on gusts of wind. Shu, the god of air and wind, smiles at Ra, and specks of sand glint in the breeze. Ra, traveling west, starts to sink lower in the sky. Back in the city of Memphis, golden rays brush the roofs of houses as families gather for their evening meals. Scribes, magicians, merchants, and farmers return home for dinner. Ra watches the families, from farmers to pharaohs, laying dishes across small and long tables. There are green vegetables cooked with garlic, spiced lentils, eggs and bread. Across the land, honey-flavored drinks wash down the hearty food, accompanied by shared stories and laughter. Ra starts to turn the sky pink, purple, and red. It's almost time for him to descend to the underworld. While the people sleep and dream, resting for the next day, Ra descends to watch Osiris keeping order in the world. His bright colors flashing across the sky, Ra heads to the horizon to meet Mayat. She is the wife of Thoth and the goddess of truth and justice. Together with her husband, Mayat regulates the stars and the seasons. She uses truth and justice to keep the cosmic balance in order. During the day, Mayat guards Ra's boat, which waits on the border of the realm of mortals. In the evening, she watches him sail away into the underworld. Now, stars poke through the night sky. The moon is rising, signaling to Ra it is time to leave for the day. He climbs into his boat, and then, with a grin and a wave to Mayat, he paddles down to the realm below. For the rest of the evening, he'll row his boat through the river of the underworld. As the last rays of the sun disappear from the sky, the moon god, Thoth, knows it is his time to keep watch. During the night, he scribbles with his pen, tracking the hours, days, months, and seasons. Meanwhile, the busy streets of the great Egyptian cities go quiet. Stars shine brightly through the black sky, and the full moon provides light as parents lull their children to sleep. By the same moonlight, 
Thoth works on his books of alchemy and astronomy, sharing magical secrets that the curious will study for generations to come. Men and women lounge in their homes, keeping each other company and telling tales. They will soon fall asleep, but Thoth will stay awake, guarding order as he weaves his tales. These are the stories that people tell by fire and by starlight about the Egyptian gods and the people who worship them. They're the tales of architects who build tall pyramid complexes and scholars practicing ancient forms of magic. Some, like the Greeks, believe Thoth is the author of the Emerald Tablets. This is an ancient text which has been cited as the foundation of alchemy, the art of transforming substances and creating magical elixirs. Many alchemists and magicians believe that the emerald tablets contain the key to making the philosopher's stone, which grants eternal life. As Thoth works on his alchemy and watches over the sleeping world, Ra continues his journey below. His steady boat rocks back and forth as he rides slowly through the river of the underworld, just as if he were floating down the Nile. As he travels, he salutes the Egyptian heroes and pharaohs of times past. Many gods call this place home. Osiris reigns here, but the underworld is also home to Anubis, the god of mummification, and Hathor, the goddess of love and fertility. They all dwell in the wide fields and wonderful caverns of the world below, where turquoise trees line the way. Thoth and Mayat call this place home as well, and only dwell above when the moon and the stars shine bright. Up above, the people fall deeper into slumber. They sleep peacefully, knowing that Ra is keeping order below, and Thoth and Mayat are standing guard above. Thoth knows that when the sun starts to rise, he'll trade places with Ra. When Ra bursts from the underworld, bringing the sun, Thoth will return below. They repeat this cycle every 24 hours. But for now, Thoth enjoys the peaceful night. He looks out across the great city of Memphis the ancient capital of Egypt. While the power of the ancient Egyptians will rise and fall several times throughout their long history, the wonders built here will captivate the world for millennia to come. Thoth smiles as his pen scratches the parchment. He loves this quiet time of night when the balance between order and chaos creates a calming equilibrium. 
but he knows he's not the only one awake. There are others who enjoy the night just as he does. For in Memphis, night is the domain of magic. While their families sleep, astronomers sneak out of bed. Wrapped in warm shawls, they study the sky. The astronomers see patterns where others see only random dots in the darkness. They name the constellations after their favorite gods and stories. One, the geese of Ra, is an ancient star pattern unknown to modern astronomers. But tonight, two famous constellations fill the night sky. They will one day be known as the Plough and Orion's Belt. The astronomers play an important role for the people of the Nile. Over generations, the astronomers have learned to let the stars tell them when the river will flood, allowing for farmers to plan their agricultural year. The reading of the stars helps the Egyptians plan for annual festivals, and some believe to predict the future. But watching the rising of the sun and moon, and studying the positions of the stars, also has a more practical function. It allows people to divide time into days, months, and years. Perhaps it is for this reason that Thoth, god of the moon, is credited with inventing the 365-day calendar. Astronomers use an instrument called a merket to study the night sky. The instrument helps them count the hours of the night through the stars. The merket measures the Deccan, a group of 36 stars, which form a kind of clock. The Book of Nut, an ancient Egyptian astronomical text, explains how these stars can be used to count the days, months, and hours. As the hours quietly pass on, the astronomers must put away their tools and crawl into bed. For soon, Ra will bring the dawn. Thoth, knowing it is nearly time to go, finishes his writing for the evening and leaves his temple. As he walks along the Nile, he imagines Ra floating below in the river, in the world of the gods. Soon, Thoth will trade places with him. In the underworld, he'll wander through caverns and see lakes of fire and turquoise trees. But Thoth enjoys his nights in the mortal world too, with wide open spaces glittering under the magnificent moon. He marvels at the city the people have built. Large, smooth bricks rise into pyramids, details of past pharaohs chiseled intricately into stone. The Nile bubbles and chatters as it passes over rocks, mud, and earth. Gentle noises soothe the sleeping people 
as the night birds hoot gently overhead. Thoth's beak glistens in the starlight as he walks, marveling at the magnificent place he gets to call home. There are so many treasures, large tombs, pyramids, and sphinxes, as well as mummies and magic. Then there's the Egyptian language, art, and mythology. The civilization of ancient Egypt will one day fall, but the culture will live on for millennia. Finally, the last decan of the night ends, bringing with it the rays of dawn. Ra slowly ascends from the world below. It is time for Thoth to go down to the land of the gods for the day, walking by the river below instead of the Nile. This is how the days and nights pass. Ra circles in the sky above, descending below at dusk. Thoth rises in the evening and keeps the stars and moon shining brightly until dawn, recording the stories of the people as they dream. Ra wakes the people with the light of dawn. They'll soon be ready to go about their days, exploring the wonders of this magical place they are lucky to call home. And then Ra will complete his circle again, painting the sky a mural of pink and purple and red signaling that it's time to sleep once more. As we end our tale, allow the stories of Thoth and Ra, the wind, the river, the stars and the moon, to fill your mind. Hear the trickling of the river and the swaying of the palm trees as the artists, magicians, scribes, merchants, farmers, and pharaohs lay down to rest. I'll leave you here to dream with them, the magic of the stars and the stories of Thoth weaving in and out of your dreams.